well as a relationship coach and Leroy Dow is a relationship coach and he's also an author of a book called Confessions of a Broken Man. Tabang Baka uh, is a clinical psychologist so if you are struggling this is probably the best time for you to call because you've got a clinical psychologist here and someone also with a lived experience. Gentlemen, thanks for, for joining us. Uh, good evening, how are you? Well, I think I'm better than many people <laughs> in this country. Uh, I think people are depressed. I think people are not doing okay. I think we are all depressed in one way or another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and one thing that we all need to agree on is that we are all going through life. Yeah. Whether you have or you don't have, life is happening to us all. Mm -hmm. And there's no excuse that one can give to say, um, life is happening at a, at, at a much greater scale to mm. me than it is to anyone else. Mm. The reality of the matter is that we are feeling what we are feeling and we we just need to find a way to balance ourselves mm. uh, with, within the motions that life yeah. throws at us. So here's the problem, exactly to the point about I think we're all going through something. Yeah. When we're all going through something, then how would I know that you perhaps are in a deeper hole than I am? and you need rescuing more than maybe I'm feeling. Yeah, I mean, um, well, I suppose all pain is, is yes. valid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we all experience pain in, 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 in how everybody understands pain from their perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us uh, are coping better than others. Mm -hmm. And, and, and your question is, how do we know? Yeah. I think it has to do with, you know, the support systems that we have around. Mm. Uh, do we talk to each other? Do mm. we check on each other? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's when we are able to communicate and to, to just check in with each other, then we are able to determine where one is, whether um, we are all struggling, but are you struggling more than me? Mm -hmm. um, I remember when the pandemic started, yeah. uh, somebody said, uh, we are all in the same boat. Mm. And somebody said, ah, no, uh, some people are in big boats. S some, some boats are deep. Small, you know? yes, yes. So, so although we, we are struggling, some are struggling uh, more than most. Mm. And I think it is when we check in with each other uh, in an authentic, honest, um, not in a rushed way, where we get to assess where one is. Yes, this is now about how we check in on each other. But what happens when the individual themselves just has become so skilled in masking this pain, you know? Um, simply because, to be quite honest, no one cares. <laughs> Nobody cares. Um, pe people don't want to know about your issues. People ask you, how are you? And they're not really asking you how you are. Yeah. Um, and so when you have someone who is so good at masking this thing, because perhaps, you know, they, they're doing what they have to do, then, then what could we do as family members, as loved ones, especially because sometimes the signs aren't there? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think the, the, when you started asking, when you started making a comment, I was just thinking about the, the context we are in, mm. right? Where, where, we, uh, where we are interested in more what people do for us mm -hmm. instead of who people are. Mm. So we don't really pay attention to who you are. We are interested in, you know, entertain me, uh, just, just, make me have a good time mm, mm. and so then the way we relate to each other we are supposed to objectify each other mm -hmm. and so hence you say maybe we don't care mm. but uh, i do think that uh, what w what we have to think about is that uh, the the context we are in where we we've come to use people mm. it's, it's there's something about the society that makes so many people feel as if you know they need to 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 die to escape uh, the, the, the situation the and I think if we are more um, honest with ourselves if we slow down um, how we engage with people mm. uh, what we get from people mm. I think we are better able to, to relate to people as human beings mm. I, I think if we, we take it there we'll be able to, to care uh, a bit more for each other mm. Leroy, you wrote the book called Confessions of a Broken Man what led to that? Um, 
I, I think I, I started writing. When I was writing, I was writing for myself. <laughs> and it just so happened that my level of transparency attracted an audience. Mm -hmm. um, the reality is that um, we have been taught to be strong. We mm. have been taught to have a superman syndrome. And you realize that you can only be super for so long. You can only be strong for so long. And when they taught us not to cry, they were indirectly saying, don't express how you are feeling. Mm -hmm. the, that's why it's even difficult to show love because mm -hmm. I feel this for this person mm -hmm. but I can't express it mm -hmm. because somewhere somehow in the developmental process of my upbringing I was convinced to, to put up this facade of strength now I live in an environment that demands me to be real Mm. But no one has created a safe environment that will handle me being real. Mm -hmm. no, one is, no one is ready to deal with a man that says I'm weak. <laughs> no one is deal, ready to deal with a man that says I'm broke. No mm -hmm. one is deal, ready to deal with a man that says I love my kids but I can't provide for mm -hmm. them. So, so, so the illusion of strength is driving us into a deeper hole of depression, a deeper hole of feeling like we are alone, a deeper hole of feeling like we are the only ones going through what we are going through. And now the, the, the reality is you go home, you sleep next to someone each and every night yeah. and they have no idea that you are in a deep hole. And you, Leroy kills himself. But Mara Leroy was on Kaya just the other day. Mm -hmm. He sounded fine. Mm -hmm. what, what people fail to understand is that pain changes us. And sometimes men are suffering not from pain that happened last year. It's pain that happened when he was eight years old, eight years old, mm -hmm. uh, ten years old, yeah. fourteen years old. When he was told that you are stupid, you will never amount to anything. And the absence of, of affirmation, I love you, I'm proud of you. And now you grow up, now you're in relationships trying to fill a void that was supposed to be filled when you were a child. Mm -hmm. And so what what then has to happen if, for instance, you're not only struggling with a world that doesn't accept your pain, but you yourself has, has not even been able to admit to your pain? That's when now Rifi Chaku pointing a little hot to and and there you start romanticizing with death. Mm. And, and, and I want to assure you that anyone who commits suicide, it, it was a long fighting battle to get to that final uh, note, you know, and I'm signing out. Mm. Uh, the reality here is that we need to understand, it doesn't matter how much support you have mm -hmm. or how less yeah. support you have. Yeah. If you are not going to be there for you, I can give you every clinical psychologist, mm. every preacher, mm. uh, every doctor, and everything at your arsenal. But if you are not going to come back, uh, we say, uh, we, we like saying, uh, uh, people don't under underestimate the pain, the pain that men go through. But you're asking a very relevant question. Do men realize the pain that they're they are in, going through? Yeah. And when are we going to come to a point of saying, Ish, uh, if I'm not going to be admitting there for me, to admitting the, in already, the first place that I you're flow, but yeah. this is hard. Mm. Because it, it begins and starts with all of that. For me to pin down a book titled Confessions of a Broken Man, mm. I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I'm already announcing that I'm a broken man. <laughs> <laughs> Very risky. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think to, to, to Leroy's point, um, he, he talked about, you know, the, the way we, uh, a person is developed. You, you also mentioned signs. I mm. think that signs are there. Mm. Uh, maybe we struggle to interpret the signs. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they, the, when we look at the lyrics and the music, mm. uh, perhaps when you look at the violence in the community, mm. uh, pe perhaps when we look at what happens on a Friday night, the rage. people are drinking, yeah. perhaps the rage, perhaps perhaps when you look at those, then we, we might be, um, we, we might want to pause a little bit and to, to interpret that, right? And so um, it, it is in also our upbringing, in that uh, you know the emotional story the emotional story of a man yeah um, uh, we're supposed to learn emotions when we are uh, from our mother's wounds uh, in the first few weeks you're supposed to learn emotions and then family teaches how to articulate it right because uh, it's first in the body a baby, a baby cries and then as they grow older we want to say oh are you crying do you want this learn to speak learn to say this and so we don't have that example with our family structures that are not intact where people don't get to move from i feel the pain in my body to learn how to articulate it and then uh, a boy is probably lugged hugged for the last time when he's probably about 10 or 11 and the only emotions you can sort of express is probably anger and probably when it comes to sex and those are the, the kind of two emotions you, you have at your, at your arsenal. And now, as Leroy says, you, you live in a world and there's a lot demanded on you. Then you need a, um, 
uh, a range of emotions, but you can't, you are not able to tap into that. So, yeah. no, no, not about. I've seen men cry watching a soccer match, <laughs> yeah. which is, I guess, is the only outlet people have. Yes. You know, so take out all that frustration on sports yes. or whatever because yes. you're not allowed anywhere else to show your emotion. Yes. So it's in the competitions. Uh, it's in the it's in the competitions. It's in anger. It's when we watch a, a match. When you watch a, mm. a, 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 some sort of a fight, there we are allowed to express that. But uh, Vulnerability. Else, yeah. uh, they, I'm scared. They, I'm not sure. They, I don't know. Uh, we don't have that. Uh, or we, we're not. Uh, men are not well practiced in that area. And 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 what then do we do with the language that goes? No, oh yeah, Loman. You know, Leroy is like that. He's always. He's just. No, he's okay. He's He's got rage. <laughs> just, just like that. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I think one of the questions we have to ask is, do do men actually know when something is is wrong, mm -hmm. right? Because if we look into say health seeking behavior, mm -hmm. if you check studies, and men don't necessarily go and you know go for a doctor's checkup. Mm -hmm. uh, if if a man has to do that, either it's affecting his his something work or he wrong. can't. Yeah, so we already have a problem with health seeking behavior. Seeking help from another person as a man seems as if you've lost or you're weak. Mm -hmm. Even uh, failed. Even uh, being vulnerable is seen as now I have to open up and tell this guy mm -hmm. or this person. Doesn't he have problems uh, of his own? Right? He doesn't know me. And so so it's it's sort of like just opening up is sort of like a, a sort of a a failed. Mm. And so I think we have to then help to um, we have to help men understand actually when you are not okay that. Uh, this this uyalo aggression mm. maybe you're not okay maybe you're a little bit depressed mm -hmm. right maybe now you are you are eating more than usual mm. you are sleeping more than usual mm. the way you are changing partners maybe that's not okay uh, the way you work all the time maybe that's not okay uh, the way you are you are you are not able to interact and connect and be vulnerable maybe they, you need to look into that. the way you are drinking the alcohol maybe you're not okay so. Uh, how to understand what, say, depression is, mm -hmm. what stress is, uh, where your limits are. So I think men don't understand those things. In fact, I was listening to a show on Kaya. Uh, a gentleman called in and he says, you know, he didn't know that he was depressed up until somebody said, I think you are depressed mm -hmm. yeah. and you need to get some help. So yeah. I think we need to uh, start there as well to understand when something is wrong, to not just think that, ah, you know, Get life. <laughs> so, know. so then, what happens to you, Leroy? Because you live in the society that we've just been speaking of. Mm -hmm. What then gets you to have that self introspection, and that makes you realize you you've got a problem. You are, as you said, a broken man. But it, first, you we mentioned admit that there's something wrong. Number two. But how? Uh, how how did you <coughs> find yourself um, in the society that we speak of? Uh, where you gave yourself permission to check that you're not okay. In a society that wants to glamorize being strong, yeah, I've, yeah. I've learned that people welcome you when, when, when they know that they can relate with you, mm -hmm. when they know that you don't have it all figured out, but you're still standing and mm -hmm. you're still pushing. Mm -hmm. The reality here is that um, we all need to go back to where we, we how, how our developmental process. Uh, remember how you were brought up, the things that are affecting you that you didn't have a chance to talk to anyone about. I mean, I grew up in a home, my father, my father father was forever present, he was there. My father loved my mother with everything in him. Uh, I could never, I can never, and still today, I can never fault my father's husbanding skills. But I have, I can <laughs> fault my father's fathering skills. <laughs> Did uh, he talk to you much? We didn't talk much until, was the, he a last, newspaper guy? Un, un, until the last four years of his life. Wow. But, but now, I, I, I learned later in my life that my father needed me to be a son to him in order for him to learn to be a father to me. Wow. So they had to, the, the relationship that required the both of us to come to that point. But mm -hmm. until I came to that point, I hated it. And the mm -hmm. funny thing about hate, and, and more especially when you're hating your father, is mm -hmm. that you become like him. Mm -hmm. And now the more you become like him, the more you hate him because you start seeing him in you. Now you start hating yourself. yourself. Yes. <laughs> now, now you have to deal with this love-hate relationship that you have with yourself. And the only 
only way to cope with it <laughs> is to either find some body whom you will say I love you only to get them in your space to try to fill the void that your father could not fill. In the meantime, we keep telling you you're just like your father. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that agitates you, irritates you and angers you even more. Yeah. And and now when you look yourself in the mirror, you start seeing resentment. <laughs> but it's like it gets so so I'm trying to say it's to me cycle. that yeah. yeah, what you hate to become yeah. and what you learn to forgive you 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 let go of uh, we have a whole lot of healing that needs to happen because mm -hmm. we have bottled up a whole lot of things when a man begins to act violent when a man begins to be found in a club from thursday to monday and when a man begins to 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 there's nothing wrong with driving big and smelling nice but what are we covering up mm -hmm. uh, if, if i can take everything that you have away do, who do you define you as if, if i can take away the car mm -hmm. the woman that you so brag about mm -hmm. and the money in the bank mm -hmm. who do you define yourself as god has has put in us the instinct to be a provider and there's nothing wrong with that but you need to understand that there's a building process and you need to adapt into a new uh, idea and a concept that we're living in women are making more money than men and men are finding themselves where women used to be 50 years ago and it's not a nice feeling <laughs> Did he know that you felt this way about him, your father? Yes. He did. The last four years of his life, we, we, we literally reconciled. And the funny thing is, uh, we, were, we were so much alike mm. that I remember one day he asked me, why couldn't we do this all mm. uh, and, 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 and the funny thing is, none of us knew what the problem was. Yeah. We just knew, he thought I was stubborn, mm -hmm. I thought he didn't love me. Mm -hmm. and, and the funny thing is, you say a man doesn't love you, but you're under his roof, he's providing education and all of that. So, but we, 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 we being fathers today, uh, knowing how it felt to have the kind of fathers that we had, we owe it to our kids to, a bit, to be a little bit emotionally involved. Uh, to go to the soccer match or the swimming because I I played cricket mm. and Jonathan was the twelfth man and Jonathan <laughs> was not even playing. And That's the father of the other. It is, and, and I was the opening batsman. You check the grandstand. Jonathan came with the grandmother and father. Even the cat. Now you, you can't even trace, you can't even look at anyone that is there to support you. Look, so, so I'm, I'm curious about that because you are now an adult, right? And you also understand, surely as an adult, what it must have taken yes. for your father to provide. Yes. That unlike Jonathan, maybe he can't be there. He has to do what he has to do to provide for you. Yes. And providing for you is his love language. Does that make a difference? It, hence I said, it, it, I, it only hit home mm. when, when I was like in my 20, when I was 25, mm. that he couldn't be there because he was trying to maintain this lifestyle yes. that he was awarding me. But yes. unfortunately, that lifestyle exposed me to other people <laughs> who had more who had more yeah. and and the parents were there so now i had to get off my high horse and start appreciating that's mm -hmm. why i said it took me uh, learning how to be a son to my father for mm -hmm. him to learn how to be a father to me mm -hmm. and i think that's that's a type of reconciliation process that needs to happen to fathers there's a quote by frederick Douglass that says um it's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. The reality is you yeah. will never build yeah. strong children yeah. for as long as you have broken men in your midst. Because we can you, we can build strong children now, but they're going back home to broken men. And you need to understand that fatherhood cannot be taught. We observe. Mm. We watch. So what have you learned from your observation? I've learned that, uh, look, my dad did his best. Mm. And, 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 and he did not run away. And, and sometimes we don't give men credit. Sometimes we just need to say, thank you for staying. Mm -hmm. Considering the amount of men who ran. Mm -hmm. Considering the amount of men who just decided to end it all. Uh, uh, not that my father did not go through his motions of depression. Considering that you are Con a difficult child. Considering that I was me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I, I owed him that. And, and that is why when he passed on, it, I, I didn't even need anyone to tell me to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So the reality is that we... Mm -hmm. We have a long way to go, but there's a reconciliation that needs to happen to the to the grown version of us. Mm -hmm. Whether the father is dead or mm -hmm. the, whether the father is not dead, you need to reconcile those emotions with, within yourself because keep you keep hating him all you want, mm -hmm. you're becoming like him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you're now an adult, you've got to take yes. responsibility. 
Mm. That's it. Okay, so let's take those calls. 86 I mean, it's it's quite an interesting conversation. The book is called Confessions of a Broken Man. It's by Leroy Dow, who's a relationship coach, and I'm also with clinical psychologist Tabang Tlaka. And uh, as I said, I will take your calls. I'll also have a look at your tweets at Kaya on Air as well as... We are discussing uh, depression, I guess. I hope that's what it's, it is, because I don't know if we're only discussing depression or something else, but Tabang Tlaka will explain all of that to us. He's a clinical psychologist. Leroy Dao is a relationship coach, and he's an author of a book called Confessions of a Broken Man. So, Tabang, is it, should, should we have someone classify you as depressed before we get worried? Um, so, I mean, if we look at just depression as a, as a mental health uh, mm -hmm. issue, a, a disorder, uh, it's got two features, right? One of them is um, a loss of interest mm -hmm. and a low mood. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part is that sometimes it's something you know or something that other people might know, mm -hmm. might, might, might observe. Mm -hmm. So many people are actually told by their family members, but you, you're not the same or something is, is different about you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it, it goes both ways. I think... We have to develop insight, so people have to understand uh, how they work when things are okay or when something has shifted. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, when we have support and people around us uh, who um, who are able also to to comment about our our state. Yeah. Uh, and people who actually die by suicide, mm -hmm. part of what they struggle with is is this feeling of I'm alone. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm alone. Nobody understands what I'm I'm going through. Nobody understands the the burden that I'm carrying. Mm -hmm. And so. I think if, if a person can get to a point where they are able to to tell that there's a shift in their mood, there's a shift in how they usually do things, um, then I think we, we have a better chance of, you know, uh, if you identify the problem and then we are able to do something about it. So it, it takes just noticing something tiny, yeah. just a little shift. Yes. Before, you know, you don't have to have had a big conversation with a psychologist to tell you that you know you're depressed it just takes that little um, as you said earlier you know somebody called to say well I didn't even know I was depressed until someone said maybe you are depressed yeah, yeah. I, I think the, the, the other thing that we struggle with is um, um, yeah. many people are surprised by suffering mm -hmm. uh, you know we've got this thing about you know, I just want to be happy life is happy but you know all um, I suppose philosophies, religions, just existence, right? There's this thing about suffering, mm -hmm. which one can't escape. When, when, you, when you live your life, um, it means that someday, at some point, something will happen to you. Mm -hmm. and, and then we have to be able to now, when that happens, to be able to adjust to that and integrate it. Mm -hmm. But we are not prepared for that. Um, so, we, 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 so if you are not prepared for that, when, when, the, when whatever happens to you, um, you, you get surprised mm -hmm. and you think there's something wrong with life mm -hmm. and then then you all know the shift you will know that oh now I need to adjust, adjust. Mm -hmm. yeah but uh, part of life is that sometimes um, life can offer you very difficult questions mm -hmm. it can be questions about your relationship uh, questions about loss uh, questions about your own health mm -hmm. uh, so you can go through um, very difficult things but this is part of life and if if you understand these things that life uh, ebbs and flows um, and then so when they do happen to you you will then be able to say at this point maybe I need to slow down at this point I need to adjust at this point I need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. I do not need to just carry on as if everything is the same mm -hmm. so I think to, to notice those shifts uh, one has to have a good perspective on how how life works mm -hmm. how people work so you also understand your, your limits you'll be able to entertain them uh, or deal with them better so I've got a mental health specialist on the line, Carol, um, who's been listening to this conversation. Carol, thank you so much for, for calling. Good evening. Hi, good evening. And what a wonderful program that you're having. It's really, really interesting. A lot of very, very good points that have been raised. It's really, really tricky yeah. to Yes. Your, your take on the subject, Carol? I'm, I'm not sorry? I'm saying your take on the subject and what you've been hearing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one of the things that I'm curious about is is sometimes I'm, I'm told this can be genetic, right? So we can then clinically say that there is a genetic problem or you have a specific genetic clinical makeup that makes you prone to being depressed. But I wonder to what extent society's influence is also part of the kind of big problem that we see and find ourselves in. You've spoken about life, life happening, yeah, yeah. and that, you know, of course you're going to have ups and downs and so on. But let me tell you, when I go on Instagram, everybody's on holiday. Mm. The whole year, nobody seems to be working. <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody seems to have problems. <laughs> everybody's life is more perfect than yours, right? Mm. So what then will it have to take for us to bring up children? In, in you know to help them understand that life is not Instagram, life is not this this thing that you see on television on your streaming channels. The life life is up and down. It's challenging. Sometimes it will throw other things at you. What then needs to happen because we are building a society mm, yes. that more and more removes the reality of life. Yeah. I think number one is, is that we are special, but not that special. Mm -hmm. Not that special that life will not happen to you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Number two, uh, check the process it takes for you to post one photo on Instagram. <laughs> and edit, and edit, and edit. The process it takes to give you an indication <laughs> of what everyone else is doing. Yes. And number three, take a look at the pictures you take. Yes. at the moment that you take the pictures mm -hmm. and where you are taking the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes, here you are being envious of somebody posting a picture that they took two years ago. <laughs> because now they are home, uh, depressed themselves, and now going through their phone and yes. thinking, ah, I didn't late post. And <laughs> now here you are looking at that and now you are comparing your life with that life. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, um, let's, let's try to find a sense of identity for ourselves. Define who you are outside to the hashtag define who you are <coughs> outside people telling they telling you that they love you and all of that because another thing that that messes us up is that we are looking for outside validation mm -hmm. and, and the most important validation you can ever have is the one that you give to yourself mm -hmm. uh, if people congratulate you mm -hmm. uh, then kudos to you but mm -hmm. be the first one to congratulate yourself and another thing let's stop distracting ourselves